where that serving area is was three classrooms. Yeah. And then that's a new kitchen out there behind that. Yeah, how many of you are alums? Ah, uh -huh. okay. So this was the cafeteria? Mm -hmm. That was the library. That was the library for some. Yeah, for me. Classrooms for others. <laughs> Guidance office and the cooks over over here, you know. Yep. One of the other things you might want to know that you probably wouldn't know unless you're here every day is that this is our cafeteria and it's pretty full. We have three lunches and it's packed all the way from the wall to the wall. And this is our main presentation area, our training area for teachers. This is the only really space we have when we do PD for teachers. So this room, like John was saying, is used constantly all the time. morning, noon, and night. So that's this is the main main space that we have. So is, isn't it used for homerooms also? Homerooms and yes, yeah, study halls. Multiple yeah. homerooms. Multiple homerooms, Multiple homerooms yeah. We have tried to put homerooms into classrooms, but we've run out of rooms. Right. So we have uh, three different homerooms in here. One over one, here, two, one here, and one here. So uh, we just run out of classrooms, so we have to use it. Uh, we also tried to use put study halls in classrooms, and we can't do that anymore. The classrooms are booked just about every period. Well, every period. There's a few that are open, but so we do study halls in here. It's not the best, but. It's, it's what we have to do, so. You need to be aware of that the only way to get to this room, if you happen to be in a wheelchair or can't walk real well, is you go down the elevator, and come through this way. Uh, there's storage area back here where they put things, and there's stairs because that used to be where people would watch the swimming meets. Um, so this is used for choir and uh, piano. There's a piano class and a guitar class that also meets in here. One of the complaints that we hear about this from students, and not as much teachers, more students, is the fact that we have an educational setting right on the other side of a door while they're working on music in this room, whether it's piano playing, guitars, or singing, um, and then also trying to have an educational experience in a whole other class. So um, there's just not enough separation between these two classrooms that, that becomes an issue. So um, this, I think, fits our needs in terms of space, um, just not necessarily, again, from the educational side of things. So. varsity locker room we don't have a restroom in here um, so if we have uh, any type of a halftime or any type of a, a meeting space um, there's not even a restroom within this space so uh, very tight as you can tell um, I mean this is this is what we could consider a varsity team with all of us sitting here right now so you can imagine it gets pretty tight um, and on top of that, every girl's program is going to use this from the varsity level. So if we have multiple things going on at the same time, uh, for example, track and soccer in the spring, we run into some issues with that. When we redid the building, was the security doors. Yes. And right now that is huge. It's just huge. Uh, 8 o'clock, we lock things up. To get into the building, you have to go through the office. Maybe on the even days, girls could have the showers. Yeah. 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 Oh, days, the boys could have. Oh, oh this is the boys' locker room. Yeah. Yeah. This is considered the PE. I can smell it. Yeah. This is considered the PE locker room or visiting locker room. But they have all the showers. The locker room next to it is usually the fresh soft.
So one of the reasons we wanted to bring you guys down here, um, so we need more bays, especially with where welding is right now. We, we have seven bays right now. And I know, Carl, I'm sure you've explained that. One of the reasons we actually wanted to show you this, like this programming that we can offer within this space is phenomenal. I mean, this is state-of-the-art equipment, um, but again, it's the space that we have uh, with the machinery that we have and trying to, to build a welding program as well. Um, it just becomes very tight working with industrial machinery. So um, beautiful equipment. It's just really passive on what we can do and the, the size of the pieces that we can use. Is that it, this is what our classrooms could be. Um, this is our only classroom like this in the building. Um, it's phenomenal. Uh, there was a lot of outside help to make this happen. Um, it, certainly from, from local businesses and community members and all of that. Um, we love this room, but again, it's the only classroom we have like this. Um, and as you noticed, you came down a bunch of stairs. Um, again, when we have any type of, of uh, crutches, wheelchair, anything like that, we either have to move this class, and again, we don't have another classroom like this. One of the biggest complaints we get from industry leaders is that our students do not know how to collaborate in the workplace. That's what this is supposed to be. This whole class is about collaborating and meeting and, and brainstorming and working together. So that's, this. you know, we asked our industry people during our career expo what bugs you. That's one of the things they say is they got to learn how to work collaboratively, to solve problems. The TVs along the wall are, are really workstations. They move the tables over and they can get on their Chromebooks and those are workstations. <laughs> yeah, pretty much every piece in here outside of the, the, the wall mounted stuff is, uh, is modular. So it's all modular furniture. So um, different classes can set it up for their needs. Um, there are multiple classes that use this. It's yeah, not this just these all the time. Yeah. 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 So you can see, <laughs> this is Phil, uh, and because of the situation, there's a number of rooms on this floor that are this size or just a little larger. They're not like the usual size in the next wing. So it's, uh, it gets tight. Do they usually use every desk that's in here too? There are a number of classrooms. This is full. Because I can't imagine what it looks like when all those desks are They're full. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we got good kids. We really do. This is one of the issues. Now we can go next door to this classroom the same size. So it shows you, you know, well, you got all these rooms, but they're small, yeah. So what happens is when I'm picking rooms to you know for teachers' assignments, you have to get a room that'll hold everybody. And sometimes classes are are made smaller because the room doesn't fit. They even no matter how great our kids are, and Mr. Hollingsworth is, is correct on that, our kids do handle themselves very well in the classroom. Our teachers handle their classrooms pretty well. 24 people. We're just the right. How about the old, the old uh, high school seats where the arm, you know, that was attached to seat. I mean, yeah, these seats, out. these are really wide. And, and so <laughs> one of the things on that and why that these are actually new to sit in this room specifically is when you're one to one and you've got a device sitting out as well as notebooks or whatever else you're taking notes with, you need a little bit more space. So um, this room actually just last year was old desk. Yeah. These yeah. are brand new. This year. She's all new.